for in Jesus mighty precious name we are prayed amen amen and amen in Jesus mighty name amen good evening my dear friends and welcome to today's episode of the journey to marriage I hope that song blessed you is also one of my favorites. It talks about God being our Ebenezer, being our rock, God being our all in our all. And I know, as well as you know, that without God, we are nothing. Without Him, we are no one. He is everything to us. I hope that song blessed you. And I welcome you especially to today's episode of the Journey to Marriage. If you are joining us for the very first time, I humbly and especially welcome you. I know that God will bless you and God will touch you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight we are going to be praying and be crying to the Lord of the, the Lord the Lord of hosts, the God that never lost any battle, the almighty God, the one that cannot fail, the one that cannot change, the one that cannot disappoint. We will be crying unto him the God, the only God that answers prayers. Because all other gods, they are the works of men. They have eyes, they cannot see, they have ears, they cannot hear. They have hands and feet, they cannot move or touch. He's only our God, the Almighty, the one whose name is Jehovah. He's the only one that can hear, he's the only one that can see, he's the only one that can answer prayers. And it, it is unto him that we are crying tonight through the name of Jesus. And I know that God will hear us from the heaven of heavens. So, before we get right in and start praying tonight, I'll kindly ask you to right now invite someone along, married or single, invite them right now. Send this, send this, this to them, ask them to join, ask them to watch. You know one thing about prayer, prayer is an investment that we make so a married person can pray for their sisters, their loved ones, can people pray for their children. So right now invite someone to join us and let us all pray together, let us all cry to the Almighty God. The Bible says there are two or three are gathered. There is no distance in the spirit. Wherever you are, we can cry out. And I know that God will hear us tonight. And aside inviting someone, I want to especially, you know, encourage you to stay focused, to stay put, and to pray. Don't be distracted. Get your Bibles ready because we're going to be praying from the Word of God. There's nothing as important as praying back the Word of God because when we pray the Word of God, we are actually praying in the will of God. We cannot pray amiss when we are praying the word of God. So stay focused now. You may be with people that, you know, are not really paying attention, but for you, pay attention and pray along because God is said to do mighty things in your life. I pray that God will touch you in a special way tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. So we're gonna be praying tonight. You know, oftentimes, I wanna relate, relate it in the way my husband puts it when he's preaching. He says, if you're the one that only prays when you have a problem, then you really have a problem. Because oftentimes people don't pray. People only use prayer as, you know, a fire for fire means of escape. When the problem has already come, when they are already faced with issues, that's only when they remember to pray. That's when they remember to cry upon the Lord. But that is not the right approach. Prayer should be our attitude because when we pray, we don't only stop things, we prevent things from happening. When we pray, prayer is like sending things into the future. When we pray, we can stop a negative occurrences. When we pray, we can stop a lot of things. We can end a lot of things. The Bible says, how can these things be? How can they happen? All these prayer, all these things that we want, all our desires, our expectations, we want to get married, want to get married in a good home, want to have a good husband, have a good marriage, have children, have all of that. God has already promised you all that. But remember what the Bible says. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto you. God was speaking to the children of Israel in the book of Ezekiel. He said, I know that you have needs of the, all these things, but I'm going to wait for you to ask me so that I will give it to you so there is a place for asking. Now that you have been promised a thing does not mean that you automatically, automatically get it. Sometimes you need to ask, Lord, I need this and I need that. And that's what we're going to be doing tonight. Jesus was teaching us how to pray. He said before we pray, she said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. So before we get down into making requests and asking God and binding and all of that, we want to first 
first of all, give thanks and praise and worship and adoration to God. We want to lift our voice and thank Him because it is only Him that is living. It's only Him that is still alive, that has needs of things, that can even say, oh, I want this or I want that. Those that are dead, they, they don't want anything anymore. So that you are even alive and you even have needs and you have things to request to God. That's a testimony in itself. And I always say this, life is the greatest blessing. It's the greatest gift. If you have life, you are so blessed already because that is the greatest gift. Without life, you won't be looking for shoes, won't be looking for husband, won't be looking for wife, won't be looking for children. Without life, you won't be looking for all that. So wherever you are right now I want you to lift your voice and say father I thank you I thank you for my life I thank you for my destiny I thank you for everything that you are doing for me Lord I lift my voice and I give you praise if not for anything the fact that I'm still alive that I'm still here that means that Lord you are good to me so I want you to lift your voice wherever you want tell him Lord I thank you for my life I thank you for my going out and my coming in I thank you for who I am today I thank you that I'm still in the land of the living I thank you I'm not in the mortuary I thank you I'm not in the in the hospital I thank you I'm not in the mental home, I thank you. I'm not in the mental asylum, I thank you. My mind is still right, I thank you. I'm still living, I thank you. You know, I still have two eyes, I thank you. You know, people take all these things for granted. You still have two eyes, you have two hands, you have two legs, you can move, you can walk around. There are people that have, that have money, have husband, have wife, have all of that, but they cannot even eat. They, 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 they need one machine or the other to feed them but I believe that that is not your story so you have enough reason to thank the Lord tonight lift your voice wherever you want tell him Lord I thank you Father we thank you tonight Lord we give you glory Lord, Lord we give you honor Lord we give you worship Lord we give you praise Abba Father we exalt you Abba Father we magnify you Lord we take some time tonight to say thank you thank you Jehovah Lord God Almighty for all that you are doing in our lives for all that you are doing for us Father we give you praise we are still here lord we are not dead we are still here that means that you have been mindful of us lord we give you glory lord we give you honor lord we give you worship lord we give you praise what can we give to you lord in exchange for the free life the bread of life that you have given to us we are not better than them that are sick in the hospital we're not better than them that are dead in the mortuary we are not better than them that have been buried lord we give you all the glory what can we say to you our god than to say thank you we lift our voices tonight lord to say thank you thank you and thank you and thank you we cannot pay you lord for your goodness we cannot pay you lord for your kindness we cannot pay you lord for your steadfastness we cannot take to pay you lord for your love <coughs> we thank you father we give you glory <coughs> we give you honor Lord we give you worship Lord we give you praise our God what can we give to you Father for being good for being kind how can we repay you Lord for watching over our going out and our coming how can we thank you Lord for making us who we are today how can we give you praise Lord, we just want to say thank you, Jehovah, for the many times that you saved us at the verge of danger. I want to thank you for your eyes that watches over us. We want to thank you for your faithfulness. We want to thank you for your love. We want to thank you. We give you praise and glory, God. We give you honor and worship. Lord, we don't have anything to complain about because you have been good to us. If we have lost anything, we are not married. Lord, you're the reason why we are even still living and when we have life, we have hope that we are going to have everything that we ask of you. So, Lord, we give you glory tonight. So, Lord, we give you honor tonight. So, Lord, we give you worship tonight. So, Lord, we praise you tonight. So, Lord, we magnify you tonight. So, Lord, we exalt you tonight. So, Lord, we lift you high tonight. So, Lord, we thank you tonight. There is nothing that we can give that can repay your love, that can repay your kindness, that can repay your steadfastness, that can repay your faithfulness, that can repay you for
for what you have done for us. Lord, we thank you. We can't bear you, Lord. We can't bear you, Lord. We put me many times where there was none to help. Thank you, Jesus. For the many times that you helped us, we give you praise. Lord, we say, may your name be praised in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I want us to open our Bibles as we give God glory tonight, as we give Him praise tonight. The Bible says in Psalms 127 and verse 1, it says, Unless the Lord build the house, the neighbor in vain will build it. Unless the Lord guard the city, the watchman waited but in vain. It is not because of what you know that you are still alive. It's not because of how smart you are that you have achieved all that you have achieved. It's not because of you. It's because the Lord was watching over you. It's because the Lord was faithful to you. I need someone to lift their voice once again and say, Lord, I thank you for watching over me, for protecting me, for preserving my life, for preserving my destiny. It is not because I, I, I have the best safety. It's not because I can drive. It's not because of what I can do. You go out, you come in every day. God watch over you. There are people that went out and they never came back. There are singles that went out, they never came back. There are singles that slept last night but did not wake up this morning. We are not more righteous than them. We are not more better than them. There's nothing that we have done to merit it. It's only the faithfulness of God. So I need someone to lift their voice and tell him, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I give you glory. Lord, I give you honor. We thank you, Lord, for how you are preserved us, for how you have preserved our lives, for how you have preserved our destinies, for how you have preserved our going out our coming in, for how you have washed over us, our God and our King. We worship you tonight. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you worship. We return all the praise to you, God. We say, Hallo, Hallo be your name, oh God. We are grateful. 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 Blessed be your holy name in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, we are praying in Jesus mighty name you know sometimes we complain so much about the things that we don't have and we forget about the things that we have the Bible says that the life of a man does not consist in the abundance of things that we that he has your life is not in the abundance of things that you don't have what you have it's in God that is showing you mercy sometimes we forget about all the things that God is doing for us and we focus a lot on the things that he's not doing so tonight I just want us to just not focus on what he has not done but to focus on what he is doing on what he has done do you do you know how much it could have cost you to have life if God is not giving you giving it to you for free. Do you know how much it costs to be in good health? Do you know how much a blind man will give just to have two eyes? And you have it for free. You're complaining you don't have clothes to wear. Do you know that there are many people that are praying? That wish that they have clothes but they don't have good health. They are lying in the hospital bed. They cannot even wear the expensive clothes. You're complaining you don't have shoes. Do you know how many beautiful people are walking? They don't have feet, not to talk about wearing shoes. You can move your hands. Do you know how many people are in the hospital that are saying, Oh, I wish that I'm able to lift my hand. They cannot lift their hand. They cannot even move from the bed. They need someone to help them to get up. They need someone to feed them. They need a machine to feed them. They cannot even eat. For most of us, we can eat everything and anything. You know that there are people that the doctor have told them you cannot eat this, this, that, that. The only thing left for them to eat may be just vegetables, maybe just this or that. But here you are. You, you are living. You are, you are living. That's the greatest blessing. So I want us tonight again to lift our voice. I don't know how you see yourself, but when I look at myself, irrespective of what I don't have or what I have not achieved, I see myself as an achiever because I have life. I, I see myself as someone that God loves so much because if God does not love me out of the billions of people and millions of people in the world, He chose to preserve me. He chose to wake me up every morning. So I want you to lift your voice in your own way, wherever you are, and just tell Him, Lord, I'm grateful that I even have two eyes. I'm grateful that my hands can move. I'm grateful that I can clap my hands. I'm grateful that I can wave my hands. I'm grateful 
then I wake up and I can get out of my bed, then I can eat and digest my food. You know that people that can eat, but they cannot, the food cannot digest. They need machine, they need drugs to help them digest. Most of us, we sleep everywhere and anyhow. We just sit down, we sleep. You know that people that cannot sleep, they need drugs to help them to sleep. So you can see how good God has been to you. Lift your voice and tell him, Lord, I am grateful. Lord, I am grateful for what you have done for me, for keeping me alive, that I'm even who I am. I am grateful. Lift your voice and thank you because when you thank God, you move him to do more for you. So lift your voice and thank him tonight. Tell him, Lord, I thank you for what you have done for me. I thank you for the little blessings I'm receiving from you every day, especially in life. I am grateful. Blessed be your holy name, Father. We give you praise. Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we give you honor and worship. We thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, our rock. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are giving thanks. Amen, amen, and amen. We still want to thank the Lord. Now, let us not even think about what he has done. Let's think about his greatness. He is God. He's the God of all flesh. He's the master of the universe. He's the greatest God. He's greater than the greatest. He's higher than the highest. Let's just lift our voice and just thank him for who he is. I don't know who he is to you, but I can tell you who he is to me. He's my God. He's my Father. He's my rock. He's my defender. He's my helper. He's my preserver. He's my everything, my all in my all. He's the one that is greater than the greatest. The great God. He's the Agidiba. He's the highest one. The one that is higher than the highest. The one that is greater than the greatest. The one that is bigger than the biggest. He's the only God. The only God that sits in heavens and makes the earth is supposed to. He's the almighty God. His name is the Lord of hosts. He's the one that fight my battle. He's my protector. He's my preserver. He's my provider. He's the God that lead me in the way that I should go. I will just lift your voice in your own way and give him praise and glory. For that we just want to thank you tonight. How great you are. How mighty you are. The one that watches over the universe. The one that formed the universe. The master of all things. It is you that we worship tonight. Lord, we don't only thank you for what you have done for us. We remember who you are. Great and mighty. We remember who you are. The greater than the greatest, remember who you are. Our Ebenezer, our rock, our God, our healer, our helper, our provider, the one that supplies all our needs according to the, his riches in glory. The one in whom we move, we live, we have our being. You are the greatest God. There is none, no, none, no one that we can liken unto you. Oh, great God of hosts, we give you glory. The God that formed the heavens, the one that stretched the heavens like a curtain, the God that the heavens cannot contain, the almighty God, the Lord of hosts, the commander of the chief of the host of heaven, the one that the elders and the angels adore. Lord, we just worship you. Almighty, all-knowing, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, you mean important, you mean present, it is you that we worship tonight, Lord, we give you praise and glory, blessed be your holy name, in the mighty name of Jesus we are praying, amen, amen, and amen, we cannot lift our voice tonight and thank the Lord, you know, because we, are, we, are, we really want to thank him tonight before we ask him anything, you know why we want to thank him, we want to thank him because the Bible says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, God was speaking, he says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. I have thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you and me an expected end. Some, some version says a future and a hope. I'm just going to open it so I can read some other version. To give you a, to give you a future and a hope. God has good plans for us. His plan is not that we suffer. His plan is not that we struggle. His plan is not that we, we end in tears. He has good plans. So we want to thank him for that good plan that he already has for our lives. Jeremiah 29 verse 11, I read. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. God already has a future planned out for you. God already has a hope for you. So we're going to lift our voice and thank him. That future includes your marriage. That future includes your spouse. That future includes your children. That future is already planned. There is no good two ways about it. God has already planned this. So we're going to lift our voice. Why should I worry when I know that God already planned my future, already have plans for me? So what I, what I should be doing is not 
complaining, but rather thanking him and calling forth my future. So we're going to lift our voice and tell him, Father, I thank you for your good plans for my life, for your good plans to give me a future, for your good plans to give me a hope. That future includes my marriage. That future includes my husband. That future includes my children. That in future includes progress. That in future includes unlimited breakthroughs. Whatever you can see, you can get. Whatever you can see in that future, you can begin to thank him now and tell him, Lord, I thank you because you have a future for me, a future to give me a good marriage. Marriage, a future that includes a good marriage, a future that includes a good husband, a future that includes a good marriage, a future that includes a good wife, a future that includes a happy home, a future that includes a home that has many children. Lord, I just give you praise for your plan that you have for me to give me a future, to give me a hope, to give me a future, to give me a hope, to give me a future, to give me a hope. Lord, you already have me covered. You already have this young one. You already have this beloved ones covered. You already have their future planned out. You already have everything worked out. So Father, I'm giving you praise for everyone watching, for everyone listening, both single or married. Thank you, Jehovah, for the plan that you have for them. Thank you because that is what your word says and your word cannot lie. Father, you say that you already have a good future and a hope planned out. So we are thanking you for that future. We are thanking you for that hope. Bada, Letoria Manano, Shandoria Badaya, Nekeya Badaya, a future that the enemy cannot destroy, a future that the devil cannot steal from us. You already have it planned for us, and we give you praise tonight for that future, for that hope. We give you all the glory. Blessed be your holy name in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. You know, we really need to repent tonight so that God will hear us. For most of us, we have complained too much. We have questioned God too much. We have asked him too much why. Lord, why me? Why am I not married? Lord, my friends are married. Lord, this is this. Lord, that is that. Every time you complain, 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 it is time for you to repent. You have to repent tonight. Your friend is not you. Your timetable before God is not the timetable of your friend. For most of us, we are living our lives as if God does not exist. We live it anyhow. We do it anyhow we want. Whatever we want, however we want. We are not paying attention to the destruction of God. We're not following the destruction of God. And then when we meet pitfalls or pitfalls, when we go in a way that is wise for us, and then it ends in destruction, when God says don't do, when you willingly go into a relationship that you know you should not be there, you do everything, you do the things that you know you should not do, and then when it, when it falls back, when it collapses, you come back and you blame God. God, why me? Why this? We need to repent tonight. So I want us to lift our voice and tell him, Father, have mercy upon me in those ways that have ignored you, in those ways that have sinned against you, for those things that I have done that are not pleasing in your sight, for those for those calamities that I have brought upon myself, for those tears and pains that I have brought upon myself and blamed you for it. Father, have mercy upon me. Lift your voice and make that prayer. Someone needs to make that prayer tonight so that your prayer can be heard, so that God can hear you. How many times have you blamed God? How many times have you envied? How many times have you hated on others simply because something happened for them didn't happen for you? How many times have you told God, why are you not doing my own? God, you hate me. God, why me? This God doesn't like me. How many times have you despised God in your heart? You need to tell him tonight, Lord, I'm sorry. How many times have you lived your life carelessly, not, not paying heed to the situation of of God. You just do it anyhow. See, God, you forget that God has your life in his hands. You just throw him to the corner and do whatever you want to do. Tonight, I want us to repent. Each and every one of us, we have something to be sorry for. We have something to tell him, Lord, I'm sorry. Do not look at anybody by your side. This is the time that you're deciding your destiny with God. Lift your voice and tell him, Lord, I am sorry. Lord, I come to you tonight. I have come to the end of myself. I have come to the end of my way. Sometimes, we look as if we are so smart we know it all we won't be going our own ways and we know that our our wisdom is not enough god knows more than we do but sometimes we have ignored him even when he's warning us not to do we are still doing let us tell him lord have mercy lord forgive me tonight lord forgive me tonight i come to you just as i am lord have mercy cleanse me from all unrighteousness wash us wash us wash us but i pray for this dear ones the lord i pray for this day including myself each and every one of us have mercy upon us. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy upon us. Our cry will come up to you tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
because those ways that we have ignored you, we have ignored you, we have done it our own ways, in those ways that we have not paid attention, we have not listened to you, but I have mercy. Maybe you have been praying, 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 maybe today is a day that you make a decree, and we're going to decree tonight. I want to boost your faith up from the word of God, from the book of Job 22 and verse 28. It says in the New International Version, when you decide on what you decide on will be done and light will shine upon your ways. The New Living Translation says, you will succeed in whatever you choose to do and light will shine on the road ahead of you. I'm just taking my time to read all this version. King James said, you also shall decree a thing, you also you will also decree a thing and it shall be established for you. So you have mouth to decree. A man of God says a closed mouth is a closed destiny. Some people, their mouth is too closed for what they want. Open your mouth and decree. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I decree according to your word in Job 22 verse 28. This is my season. My season to be joyfully married. My season of joy, I don't know. Maybe you're not even thinking about marriage. But what is it are you thinking about? Maybe your season of financial open doors. Maybe your season of joy. Maybe your season of open heavens. Maybe your season of breakthroughs. Maybe your season of deliverance. Whatever you need, you can decree it right now. You shall decree a thing and it shall be established. Maybe it's your season of having children. You may be married. Maybe it's your season of whatever it is right now. Open your mouth and decree the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I join my faith with the faith of these dear ones. Whatever they are decreeing tonight, Lord, so shall it be. Lord, so shall it be. Lord, so shall it be. In the mighty name of Jesus, those that are decreed in Makotora, Badali, Badaya, Namana, Kebrondor, Yala, Badaya, Rebo, Shadada, those that are decreeing that it is their season to be happily married. Father, so shall it be for them. In the mighty name of Jesus, those that are decreed that it is their truth, they are sitting to have their babies. Lord, so shall it be for them. In the mighty name of Jesus, those that are decreed that it is their sin of open doors. Lord, so shall it be for them. In the mighty name of Jesus, according to your word, your word says that we shall decree a thing and it shall be, we shall decree a thing and it shall be happen, we shall decree a thing and it shall happen for us. So Lord, we lift our voice tonight to decree. Lord, we make a decree tonight. Father, we decree consign every single listening. It is your set time to be married. It is your set time to be settled into your home. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we trust in your word and we decree. Matena Bredebo Shandonia Badaya. Whatever it is your children need, oh God. Those that need a open door, those that need jobs, those that need breakthrough, Lord, whatever they decree tonight, we stamp it by the name of Jesus. And so shall it be for them, oh God. Whatever they decree tonight, Lord, we stamp it. We stamp it in the name of Jesus. We shall ask anything in your name. So Lord, tonight in the name of Jesus, we have asked that you release these dear ones into their marital destiny. In the name of Jesus, we ask that the heavens over their lives will be open. In the name of Jesus, we ask that they have come into a new season. Matila manakataya libra dima dora badaya letera badoria labada. Father, in the name of Jesus, we have asked that the heavens over their life is opening. Matila manano shandoria badaya libre de badora badaya. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that the angels that is in charge of their life, of their case, of their issue, goes into action right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we decree in the name of Jesus, Mother Badaya, the Badaya, that whatever has limited them either to is broken in the name of Jesus. We ask, Matera Badaya, Badaya, Mena no Shanona, Itana Manena, Le Brendero Shandoria, Matera Badaya, Le Kende Bredo Shataya. For in the name of Jesus, we ask that shame and reproach is being wiped away. Yes, yes, shame and reproach, Mother Badaya, Le Bregena Manena. Yes, in the name of Jesus, the government. 
garment of shame, the garment of reproach is being thrown away, is being torn away, is being torn away by the power in the name of Jesus. Matala badaya da daya da, matela badale brede mato, makena bradaya. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, tears are being wiped away. Whatever we stamp it by the name of Jesus, we call it on, and so shall it be. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. I hope you are decreeing, friends. Because I have an assurance in my spirit that God is doing mighty things tonight. We're going to lift our voice and cry to him. And say, Father, remember me. Mention your name. In this season, remember me. You know, God is not a respecter of anyone. The God that did for me, and every other person that is married is the same God. He does not respect anybody. What he does for one, he can do for the other. The God that gave children to everyone is the same God. The God that is blessing other people is the same God. He does not respect anyone. The only difference is that when people are asking, so people don't ask. So I hope that you're asking tonight. The Bible says in Matthew 7, verse 7, it says, Ask and it shall be given unto you. Knock, it will be open, seek, and you will find. So lift your voice and tell him, Father, remember me in this season. In the mighty name of Jesus, remember me. I don't know what you want him to remember you for, but you can lift your voice and tell him, Lord, remember me. Remember me, remember me for this. Remember me for my marriage. Remember me for promotion. Remember me for increase. Remember me for open doors. Remember me, remember me. And wipe away my tears and take away my shame and take away my reproach. Lord, remember me, remember me, remember me, remember me. Lord, remember these dear ones as they call upon you tonight. Lord, I agree. I agree with them in faith. I agree. Your word says in two or three shall I agree in touching anything. It shall be done for them. So Lord, we agree tonight in the name of Jesus that this is their season of re remembrance. Yes, Father, we call it so. We call it so. It is their season to be remembered. Most of them are already feeling rejected. Many of them are already feeling forgotten. But your word says that you cannot forget us. A mother can forget her loving children, but not you, oh God. You don't for forget anything anyone you do not forsake anyone so father tonight we are asking you we put you in remembrance you say we should ask until our joy is full in the name of jesus for all these dear ones father remember them tonight remember them for good 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 in the mighty name of jesus let this be their season let it be their season of remembrance yes father we call that they are coming to a season of remembrance lord you will Cause men to remember them for good. Mataya badaya dora badana mana ni brede bo shandora badaya ni ke doria na badera bada matena mano shandere i kabrede badaya. Organizational system and people and individual will come under pressure for the sake of these dear ones. Whatever is due unto them, Lord, remember them. Remember them. Remember them. Remember them. Remember their marriage. Remember them. Remember them. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we know you have not forgotten. We are just calling you to remember us, that you will remember and look upon them and look upon them and satisfy them, the desire of their heart. Their expectation will not be cut off in the mighty name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. I want us to open to Zechariah 4 verse 17. You know, today we are reading the word because we want to pray back the word of God. If you have your Bibles, Zechariah 4 verse 17. And please, I hope you have a pen and a paper and you're taking down these prayers because it doesn't just end here. After here, you need to continue reminding the Lord. The Bible says, put me to remembrance. You need to continue reminding him about his promises. You need to continue in prayers. The Bible says, ask until your joy is full until you get that that you're looking for until you receive your heart desire until you get your expectation you need to continue asking Zechariah 4 verse 7 he said who are thou O great mountain before Zerubbabel you can put your name down there you shall become plain I don't know what mountain I don't know 
what barrier has been hindering you from moving forward in life, from being all that God wants you to be. The Bible says that power belongs to God. I don't know that thing that seems like a barrier that cannot be hindering you. Spiritual or physical, we're going to lift our voice and pray against barriers tonight. I want you to lift your voice and say, Father, in Jesus' name, and I do not want you to be afraid because there's power in your mouth. Remember the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in your is in the world. So I need you to speak and to pray with authority because authority is already in you. The Bible says, I have given you authority to trample upon snakes as a scorpion and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So you have authority and the greater one is inside of you. So I want you to lift your voice and say, Father, in Jesus' name, I destroy every satanic barrier keeping me from achieving my blessings, keeping me from getting married, keeping me from getting to where I should be, keeping me from fulfilling my destiny, everything that is barriering my destiny. Tonight, in the mighty name of Jesus, I break it. I break it physically. I break it spiritually. I break it everything, every satanic barrier, every physical barrier, every spiritual barrier in the mighty name of Jesus. I command them broken. Lift your voice and command every mountain standing in my way. I command you to level down right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I command you in the name of Jesus, every barrier, everything blocking my way in the name of Jesus. I command you to be leveled up. I command you to become plain. I command barriers broken. I command in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever is barriering my way, whatever is blocking me, whatever is a mountain that will not allow me to go forward, whatever is making me ah, not saying about that is somebody you're praying. You know your life has just been going around in circles. You're going around and around. You're not going forward. You're going around and backward. Lift your voice and make this prayer tonight. Whatever is making me to go in circles and not make progress in life. Lord, I come against it in the name of Jesus. Lord, I break that barrier in the name of Jesus. From today, my life begin to go forward. My life, my destiny, I command you go forward. My marital destiny, I command you make progress. My financial life, I command you make progress. Whatever, whatever open your mouth tonight in the name of Jesus. Liba tula bateya manano shande letoria na mande re bataya letoko tora bate matana na 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 le brondo na mane na mana ke brotoya da ya da ya libra kataya da meteria la badoni da name of Jesus libra kada bado shata ya bataya I command that the force of heaven be move you forward matera bataya lete na madoga da bede gede. Go forward in the name of Jesus. Libra, no, 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 Shanamana. You have gone around for too long. I command you in the name of Jesus. Go forward. Let the force of heaven tonight move you forward. Mataya da Badaya, you have said the same story for too long. In the name of Jesus, your story is changing. Yes, you know I'm talking to you. You have given that story that has happened before it keeps happening. You know you're just going to in circles. The relationship is not working. Nothing seems to be working. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, in the name that is high above every other name, I command, go forward. Your life is going forward. Your destiny is going forward. God did not create you to go in circles. His plan for you are of peace, not of evil. To give you a future, a future is not in circles. A future is not in the past. So in the name of Jesus, whatever is holding you back, whatever is tying you down, Mataya Namana, Yeteya Namana, Nebra Katera Badaya, Nebro Do Shandoria Nabadaya, Netera Badaya, Leporo Shadoria Namana, Yeterebo Shira Badaya, Netenya Manana, Netera Badaya. Future is in the front, yes. That's a word for someone. I don't know who you are, but you're watching. That your future is in the front. You need to go forward. You need to walk forward. You need to march forward. Let the force of heaven, I command that the force of heaven will move you forward tonight. In the name of Jesus. Every barrier is lifted this moment in the mighty name of Jesus. It is time for you to go.
go forward and you shall go forward nothing shall stop you every mountain that have stood against you the Lord level them this minute the Lord bring them down this minute the Lord bring them down this minute the Lord is bringing it down the Lord is bringing it down shout it confess it scream it no mountain before me anymore I am going forward my life is going forward make this decree over your life say I am moving forward I am moving forward I cannot be held down any longer I cannot be held back any longer whatever is holding my life I command you in the name of Jesus in that name that is high above every other name take your hands off my life take your hands off my destiny take your hands off my destiny take your hands off my future take your hands off my marriage take your hands off my life we come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. In the name that is above every other name. The Bible says that Jesus has been given a name that is high above every other name. And in the name of Jesus, above every other name. And in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. Whatever has a name and it must bow at the name of Jesus. Whatever is obstructing my life has a name and it must bow at the name of Jesus. And together tonight we command them to bow. In the mighty name of Jesus. We're going to go to the book of Isaiah. A lot of people. So many people are suffering setbacks in their lives. Not because of what they have done. Not because of what has been done before they even came into existence. What the Father have done? Because the Bible says that the sins of the fathers shall be visited upon the children. That will not be your story in the mighty name of Jesus. So we're going to cry to the Lord tonight. And I pray, and I, I pray and I hope that someone catches the understanding and really pray earnestly tonight. Do you know who or what your grandparents, your great grandparents, your father, do you know what people have done before you that is waiting to manifest in your life? Do you know the evil seed that people have sown, your parents, in your family, in your lineage, the evil seed that have been sown? Do you know the evil covenants that have been made? Some children were born and sacrificed to idols, sacrificed to gods. They're supposed to serve that idol or that god. But now they are here. They don't know about They're just struggling. They're just going in circles. They don't know what is happening. They are not making progress, irrespective of how much they struggle, how much effort they put in. Their life seems not to be going. They don't know what is going on. Many times it's because of things that have been done. But we're going to pray tonight because of our God is merciful and he can break every covenant. So we're going to lift our voice and say, Father, before we pray, we're going to read Isaiah 49 and verse 24. Isaiah 49, 24. It says, I read King James. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? All the captive of the terrible be delivered. 25, it says, but to say the Lord, even the captive of the mighty shall be taken away. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him who contends with you. And I will save your children. I hope you can hear what I'm reading. I'm going to read for you the same one in a more modern language from the New Living Translation. It says, who can snatch the plunder of war from the hands of a warrior? Who can demand that a tyrant let his captives go free? But the Lord says the captives of the warrior will be released. And the plunder of tyrants, tyrants will be retrieved. For I will fight those who fight you and I will save your children. It doesn't matter who have done what have done. The Lord says he will set you free. What you're going to do tonight is just tell him, Lord, set me free. Lift your voice and tell him, Lord, set me free. So we're going to lift our voice and say, Father, by the blood of Jesus, I 
am delivered from all generational family covenants or causes working against my life and destiny by the blood of Jesus. You know the Bible says that we have entered into a new covenant. We no longer belong. We belong to the family of God and all things have to pass away. So you are in Christ. You are a new creature. You didn't enter this covenant. You don't know what is going on. But you just want to pray, Father, by the blood of Jesus, I am delivered from every generational family covenant causes. Whatever it is that is working against my life by the blood of Jesus, I am delivered tonight in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and make that prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, the Bible says, For this reason was the Son of Man made manifest that he would destroy the works of the wicked, the works of darkness, so that in the name of Jesus, Father, every generational lineage, family, causes, background, covenant that be flowing from generation to generation, affecting life, Lord, it will not find place in the life of these dear ones in the mighty name of Jesus by the power in the name of Jesus and by the power in the blood of Jesus they are being set free right now Lord because they belong to a new family they belong to a new covenant the Bible says Jesus has paid the price once and for all for their redemption for their freedom no other sacrifice is necessary no other sacrifice is relevant whatever was done whatever covenant whatever cause Lord we declare them from this day known and void in the mighty name of Jesus by the finished work of Christ on the cross we cancel with this unknown in the mighty name of Jesus father we pray in Jesus mighty name and by the blood of Jesus we counsel by the blood of Jesus we counsel by the blood of Jesus we counsel every covenant every cause in the mighty name of Jesus all things have become new for this your dear ones Lord all things have become new for this your dear ones in the mighty name of Jesus. In the same way, we're going to lift our voice straight from that Bible verse. We're going to say, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, please search my family, maternal or paternal background. Please search my family and remove every barrier that is causing a delay to my marital destiny. Lord, search. Let God do the searching. You will never know. You don't know. But when God begins to search, things will begin to uncover. Lord, search my family background from my mother's side, from my father's side. Jehovah, search, search whatever is there that may be causing a limitation to my life, that may be injuring my destiny, that may be injuring my life. Father, tonight, search whatever it is. Lord, search it out, search it out, search it out and destroy it. Search it out and destroy it. Search it out and disannul it in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, look into our background. Look into the background of these dear ones. The Bible says that whatever you, God, have not planted shall be uprooted. And they are now in you, they are new creature. Your blood now speak over them. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, that you will search. And you will search into their history. Search into their lineage, search into their family background, search into their lives, search into from their mother's side, father's side, from all around, Lord, let the searching be done. Let the Lord, whatever that may be hidden somewhere that is causing a barrier to the life of these dear ones, I pray, Lord, that you uncover and you will destroy it. In the mighty name of Jesus, every hidden thing, every hidden thing that they, they don't know what it is, but something is just there. Lord, you know what it is. You see what it is, Lord. I pray that you will search it out and you will destroy it. That from any spot, these things will no longer have effect on these dear ones. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the same way, we're going to lift our voice and say, Father, by the power in the name of Jesus, I counsel and reject every flow of generational problem into my life. Some families. Great grandmother suffered it. The grandmother suffered the same problem. The mother suffered the same problem. The elder sister or elder brothers suffer the same problem and now you are seeing the sign is coming to you that's a flow it's a family the great grandfather the grandfather the father the uncle you see the same trend is happening in the family that's a flow if you do not stop it it will come to you and from you it will move to your own children and your children children you just keep flowing there's always someone that will have 
to stand up to say, hey, I say no, I hope you are the one tonight. There's always someone that will break a trend in their family. There's always someone that because you say, I say no, not me. I need you to lift your voice and pray violently like you have never prayed before. Whatever has been flowing, flowing from my grandmother, my great from generations to my grandmother, my mother, my aunties, my whatever. Lord, in my own life, I say no. I break that flow. I, I, I remove myself from that flow. I, I cut off that flow. I cut off that channel. Not in my life at all. Not in my life. It will not come to me and it will stop. It will not come to me. Neither will it get to my own unborn generation. Lift your voice and make that prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Some family they struggle to get married. Other family they struggle to have children. Other family they struggle to stay married. You will see the grandmother was divorced. The mother ended up divorced. The elder sister is divorced. Some family they don't get married at all. It's a flow. Break it. Set yourself free in the name of Jesus. Tell that problem I am not your candidate. If you already know what it is, you can just lift your voice and say, you this problem, I address you today. In the name of Jesus, I am not your candidate. Look at me very well. My case is different. You may have succeeded with my mother. You may have succeeded with my sister. You may have succeeded with my father. You may have succeeded with my grandmother. You may have been flowing freely from all these generations generations but I am addressing you from my generation you have no place in my life you have no place in my destiny you have no place you are not coming to me I reject you I refuse you I cancel you no place at all in my life there's no there's no place in my life because my case is different I belong to Jesus so I refuse you, you know when you refuse something you don't accept it it cannot happen to you it cannot work for you it's something that you accept so many singles are so okay with accepting things eh, it happened to my mother now it happened to my father it happened to my uncle no don't be like that stand on your feet tonight and say you this issue my mother was 50 before she got married my other sister was 40 i am not going to be like that in the name of jesus you know you address it send it back to where it's coming from i i, I remove myself i exonerate myself by the blood of jesus lord i pray for this dear ones in the name of jesus as they lift their voice to you tonight lord hear them from heaven whatever it is that been flowing down flowing down and it's coming to them i know there's someone watching me you are living in fear yes fear you have the fear already this thing is going to happen to me i command that spirit of fear to die from your life in the mighty name of jesus i need you to arise in faith even as we are praying you are thinking it you are still afraid ah, the lord has not given you the spirit of fear rise up in faith Be, don't look at anybody today don't even mind wherever you are say this thing no way you're not coming to my life i reject you i counsel you i decide i, I refuse you not in my life i say no my case is different you cannot have your way in my life jesus already has taken over me completely you have no place in my life i reject you i counsel you in the mighty name of jesus but i will ask that whatever you have not planted whatever you did not attach from the beginning to the life of these dear ones shall not find any root in their lives I pray that even after tonight, you will give them the power and the boldness to continue to decree, to continue to reject, to continue to say no to anything that you did not create with them, to anything that you not add to their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says that whatever the Lord has not planted shall be uprooted. I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever God did not plant in your life, it shall be uprooted. It will not take root. It will not stand. It will not come to you. It will not flow to you. That line, that line, that line that connects all of you, that makes it flow, it is cut off from your own life in the mighty name of Jesus. But I challenge you and I encourage you, keep praying, keep rejecting it in the mighty name of Jesus. Isaiah 43 and verse 16. Isaiah 43, a passage that I love so much. It's one of my most, most precious, the Bible is precious when I have I have some Bible passage that ministers to me personally, and this is one of them. Isaiah 43 verse 16. I'm going to read for you what it says. 
going to read to you what it says. 